Now let's put together another uh, closure inside of a, of a function, inside of a struct, and this will be kind of similar to the last one, but uh, you know it's good to get used to um, to how to do this. So you know, looking at it a few times is uh, is always a good thing. And uh, we're going to start out with a uh, with a city struct. It's going to be a little bit more complex than the other city structs uh, we put together, but uh, not that much. So we have, uh, we're imagining that we have a, a city with some uh, some years in its uh, in its history, and then uh, some population numbers to to match it. So like in 1881, you would have like 100 people, and so you would uh, we're going to zip these together and then uh, do things to the city. So uh, what are we going to do? Well, I guess we'll have a uh, new function because um, that is convenient, and this will just be a regular regular method with um, with you know regular stuff going in it's just a convenience there's no uh, no closure in this one so populations vec u32 so we're just going to pull in these vex to make a self and then self is going to be name uh, is going to be name to string <clears throat> make that into a string and then these ones have the same name, years, populations, so we don't have to do anything. We will just write years, populations. So that is our new function done. Uh, we can make a new city now. And then the next one is, uh, this is the one that's going to have a closure. And it's going to have one, one generic type, which is the closure itself. And we'll call it F because uh, everybody does that. And uh, so bring in a mute self. Uh, we're going to change it, and then uh, this uh, this closure itself is also uh, we we're going to use fn mute this time. So uh, we have to call it mutable. And then uh, now we're going to decide uh, or give it the type, so uh, or the trait. So you know, there's fn, there's fn mute, and fn once. <coughs> And this time we'll go with fn mute because uh, we'll practice that. And uh, so the name of the type is f. So we'll say where f is fn mute. And this time, uh, instead of putting in the whole uh, the whole self, we're just going to bring in the uh, the years and the population. So the user, the end user, is going to uh, get these two, and then they can make the uh, the modifications they want without having to use a uh, you know, a separate method, um, and you know, having us decide what they want to do with a the closure, they can do whatever they want. So we will uh, let's see, fn mute is going to have. So this is the um, the type of the closure. So it's an fn mute that takes in these two things, and uh, it's returning nothing. So we don't need that, and uh, that is uh, how that will work. And then here is the body of the closure. And uh, you remember last time you, you have this F here. So this is saying, um, I want the closure to do something. Uh, inside here is what the user chooses. So we don't, uh, we don't write that out. All that we say is uh, what it's going to work on or what it's going to take in. And so this, uh, from the user's point of view, you know, we're saying what, uh, what goes inside here, like how many how many of these uh, are, is the user going to have to name and take in and then be able to pull in and, uh, and modify. So we will have a, uh, a mute, uh, let's see, what is it? <clears throat> so we have self here. So we'll bring in uh, self.years and mute self.population. So now populations like that. And by the way, this is, um, you know, this is kind of what we did uh, the last time. Last time it was just uh, F on uh, mute self. And, uh, but that isn't, you know, the only thing you can do in a method with a closure. Like we could, you know, the inside here is actually just a regular, a regular function and we have uh, access to self. So we could, you know, we could do anything we, we want here just like in a regular method, we could say, you know, self dot years, you know, push, uh, whatever, push, uh, push a, a well, let's put a real year in there. So we could say, you know, whenever you, the, the user has an access to the closure, but uh, we can do whatever we want, or we could, you know, split self into two, or, you know, do a whole bunch of things. And of course, we could also, you know, we could return something. We could say, okay, at the end of the closure, 
we want to return a nine because uh, that's what we want to do. But uh, so so don't forget that you're not just uh, you're not just you know putting in a simple closure and then you can't do anything else. You can do you know literally anything anything you want to do like in a regular method inside here. But in our example, we don't. But uh, just keep that in mind. So that is uh, let's just make sure I didn't mistype anything. And looks like the compiler is happy. So let's uh, so let's go to main and uh, let's bring in some of this uh, city data that we have. And uh, just copying and pasting this. So we have some some years, and we have some populations. And this is for the city of uh, Tallinn in uh, in Estonia. And then you now this will be easy to uh, easy to create because we have a new function right there. So we'll say let mute. Talon equals uh, city new and the name. Well, it'll turn it into a string for us from a stir. So we just type that and then years and populations. And we don't want to own these. So, uh, or we don't care if these uh, variables are, are gone now. We just put them into the into Talon and we're just going to use this from now on. And then now we have a, you know, we can start doing fun closure stuff with Talon. So we can just, uh, I have a few uh, examples here of just all the uh, all the awesome things you can do once you have a closure. So we have, uh, let's call it city years, city population. And, uh, you know, we're imagining that we're the user now and we are working at like the, uh, the city hall and we're uh, doing a whole bunch of stuff. So let's say we want to, we decide we want to print everything out Make it into a, a big, big vec, and then uh, and then print out all the data. So we can do that. So we can say city years. Uh, make this into an iter. Into iter. We know how to use iters. And then see if you remember zip. So uh, zip is where you uh, you take two iter iterators and you put them together. And so we'll zip uh, city years, city populations. And this as well into iter, into iter, like that. So we're going to zip them together, and then we'll take the first five because we want to do that, and collect into a vec, and the vec will be well. We have a, you know, zip will turn it into a, a tuple of like year population, year population, like that. So we will give it this type. We'll say, hey, it's a, it's a tuple of one type and another, and uh, you can uh, you can choose it for us because we're lazy. And then uh, so that is our new vec, and then we can print it, and we can say you know new vec, you know print that. So this is uh, you know something fun we can do now that we have uh, an iterator. So now you know we're printing out the uh, printing out some data, you know making a vec, and this is all thanks to uh, to having a closure. Um, let's see, Italian city data, and then we can do a whole bunch of other things. We can say, okay, now we want to modify it. So, city data, Italian dot city data, and then we can say, okay, x and y, let's call it x and y this time. And this time we're going to say, just you know, put in a new year. So, we would like a new year, the year 2030, and then y. We would also like to push the uh, the population, and we think by that uh, by that date, the population is going to be five hundred thousand. So we'll do that. And what else are we going to do? Uh, we can um, this last one. I'm just going to uh, actually no. I'll type it out because it's uh, it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. So the next uh, the next one we're going to do is talent.citydata. And once again, we'll uh, we'll give it uh, the names x y, and uh, we have access to that. So let's um, so this time we're going to search for a uh, a year and try to delete it. And we have a uh, access to a vec, and you might remember the uh, the what uh, what was it the position method. So we say x dot iter and position, and this is uh, you know it's going to find bring you the position of something if it can find it inside of a vec. So that is also a closure and we're using a closure inside a closure and that's fine too. 
and the way you do that is you you get a a reference and then you uh you say okay i would uh like you to bring me give me the position of uh x if the value behind this reference is uh 1834 and um so this could be sum and it could be none. So we will do if let sum position. So this is, you know, if uh, if it gives us a number that says, hey, this exists and it's at this this um, this position inside the vec, then we will uh, then we will say, okay, let's print it out to um, you know to tell us that uh, that we're going to delete it. Um, you know, let the, let the user know. So we'll say uh, going to delete something at position something um, now like that and then uh, so we have uh, X here so we're going to uh, print that out so going to delete this will be you know 1834 and then uh, position and that is the uh, you know the index of the position and then after that we're actually going to remove it so we'll use X dot remove position and we know this is fine because uh, we have some and we know that it's definitely there and uh, also we're going to remove the uh, the city or the um, what is it the uh, the population because we want the uh, the uh, iterators to still match and then uh, finally at the very end we're going to uh, I'll just copy this in and we're going to print what's left so the years left are something this is a new line, and then the populations left are something. And there you go. So you can see everything worked, and uh, that's because I typed it ahead of time. And you can see, um, so it, it tells us, uh, you know, we have a we have a sum here. Well, also, it uh, you know it pushed this uh, 2030. You can see that later on when we print it out. So that worked as well, and. Um, and then it deletes, uh, it tells us, hey, it's going to delete this. It takes it out. And now uh, 1834, the year 1834 is gone. And so is its population. And uh, so that's just an example of, uh, you know, this is sort of like a convincing you why closures are cool uh, in, in returning functions, because, you know, this, this is kind of, um, it takes a while to get used to. But once you, once you get used to it, and we could also do, you know, an FN because FN can do FN mute so you know you don't have to uh, go with FN mute you can still you can still use uh, FN the whole time and uh, because you know it has the power of FN mute so you can ignore FN mute if you want and keep things simple and um, as long as you uh, as you remember what the closure is going to work on then you end up with this um, with this awesome method on your struct or your enum and the user can can do you know so many things they can they can do whatever they want and uh, that is uh, that is why it's uh, I think it's worth it to uh, to really get used to the syntax and uh, and get used to you know fn fn mute and fn once and uh, putting uh, closures into your methods.